Hello guys, welcome to DeFi Guy channel. Today we, ha we have another very special guest, Rams, community lead on Aster Network and founder of the NFT project called Mecca Yugen. Thank you very much for being here, Rams. So Rams, can you give us a brief introduction about you, your background, and how did you get into crypto? Yes, thanks for having me here, DeFi Guy, Gustavo. Pleasure to be here and, and finally be on your broadcast. <laughs> yeah. um, a little bit about me. Uh, so I go by Rams. My first name is actually Luis. And the way I got into crypto was basically looking for, uh, I wasn't satisfied with my jobs at the time. I was doing architecture and then I left architecture because it, it got boring. And then I went into education and I saw that there was a lot of a lot of structural problems, especially with my architectural background. You're always focused on design um, and making something, you know, last for a long time. And so with education here in the United States, where I'm currently living, there was a lot of holes and a lot of weak points in this structure. So I was looking for technology, really, uh, to hopefully solve some of the issues. Um, and then that's where I saw smart contract development really performing something that was amazing. So I got into crypto around 2018, reading about it, 2019, started participating and yeah, 2020, like full head in, in, in crypto and down the rabbit hole. Um, so I've been around for a while, seen some things, a lot of things copy, are just a copy of the previous cycle. Um, but this one's a little strange in general because of the chaotic events that happened last year, the last couple of years. But either way, I think we're all in one, the river's going one way with this technology, as I'd like to say. Um, so I've been part of a few communities as well. Um, and a lot of my kind of experience in, in crypto, I think it started off as DeFi, you know, trying out DeFi products, uh, but then slowly going into governance. And then in governance, uh, was where I started meeting community and other community members that didn't have, you know, the end goal of making money. And that was always attractive to me. Um, they were looking for, their goals were in, you know, uh, also structure, you know, uh, longevity of projects. Um, and then how do we make it more democratic or have the people's input who have good interest? So that's just a little bit about me. <laughs> yeah. No, that's interesting because for me, it was exactly the same problem that I had with the traditional Web2 um, structure as, a, for example, for jobs. One thing, uh, because I, I finished my graduation uh, in the pandemic, you know, so my first experience as a job was a Web3 experience. So I really liked the idea to, for example, having... Um, very flexible hours. Uh, I, I can contribute in different um, communities at the same time. So uh, this spiked too much attention for me, and that's when I, that's why I'm on Aster because uh, <laughs> I, I joined Aster DJM's uh, DAO, and I start to talk with people. Say, well, I can do some data analytics there. I and I find out you and other Aster DJM's uh, community members there. And they say, well, there is an ambassador program on Aster. Do you want to join? And say, well, <laughs> for sure. You know. Mm -hmm. So that's why that was my beginning to on, on on crypto. So I really like this idea that you say, Rams, that uh, Web three communities they or or, or uh, they are prof for profit for sure in some cases, uh -huh. but at least the collective side is pretty important too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think when you start encountering like minded uh, individuals that have like a bigger picture of you, then that's when it starts to get really fun. Um, yeah. And, and then uh, but of course, there's, it's not always going to be easy to find those people. There's a lot of noise in, the, in, in crypto, right? Yeah. And the other first take here that we need to talk is your experience as a community leader on Aster and managing these Web3 communities. Like uh, uh, there's this very good uh, post on the Aster Network blog explaining all your experience, you know, managing and joining uh, uh, NFT projects. So in this term, uh, Rams, 
How do you maintain and improve engagement in communities? What is like useful tactics to do like gamification using platforms like Zilli, community calls, Twitter spaces, or even incentivize uh, ambassadors using leaderboards? What is some tactics that you think it's very useful? The first tactic, um, and this comes, I'll talk about my Astar experience, um, Astar DGENs primarily is to be authentic. Um, the more authentic you are, and even making mistakes in the public uh, discord, if that's where it is, or even on Twitter, um, but saying what you mean and giving feedback as well, responding to others who are also being you know, authentic is the best, the best tactic. Um, because you start to First of all, you're human, and I show my human side <laughs> a lot and my emotions a lot. And yes, we're on the computer screen, so if it's typed out, it might be easier for people to translate. And in the, the Astar Degens community, we have a lot of you know, Asian uh, demographic. We have a lot of Japanese holders as well. And so I'm assuming like some of those things are translated, and they see and, and talk about what has been said or any DAO vote or any opinion shared by because I'm part of the council now, or was part of the core team. So being authentic helps a lot. Then, yes, there's other ways of, of promoting engagement and retention. Um, and so one of the things I told myself is that each cycle, there's going to be actually probably 50 to 80% of the people leaving. And that includes NFT communities. Um, that includes you know DeFi, any kind of blockchain. And that's what happens. Um, people lose interest because people lose money and they don't want to touch, you know, crypto again or NFTs. So the people that stay are are really the diamonds. So engagement with those people that are still around, even in the bear, uh, is key because those that's the foundation of any community. The people that are still there, even if it's a low number, um, it tends to just naturally grow if there's a good product. Right. And if people believe in it. And there's even bad products out there, but people, <laughs> even if yeah. people stay in that, it still grows. So it just shows the power of, of a community, um, no, no matter how small or large. If there's people there, engage with them, um, help each other out, and then push forward. So a lot of these ideas, like Zelly, came from, comes from a community member, Disruptor, who's now on the council, who promoted it and wanted to, to use it. And so it was successful. You know, we helped fund it. We tested out a little bit, and it was, I think, out of the whole Polkadot ecosystem, we are the largest Zelly, you know, more active account. So we decided to experiment further. So experimentation and is helpful. So if you're a community that is afraid to experiment, don't be. Uh, test it out a little bit. Like, we do it with our transactions. We send, like, one Astar to the exchange to see if it get there. You can do that with, with communities too. Test out little things on a smaller scale and then scale up if it works. So this is actually uh, one of the good things about Astar DGENs is we hear out people. Uh, we have a good treasury and we, we test out a few things. So this is, and yes, we did experience uh, less activity because of the bear market, but we're still continuing strong. And I think we're actually growing still. Yeah. No, I completely agree is, for example, um, one way to at least maintain this engagement is, uh, like everybody says, a, a gamification, because in this, at least this new generation and mine, whatever, they, they really like to be part of something, some identity. And DAOs that generate uh, with uh, NFTs is a very powerful tool to generate this identity. And then when you add gamifications like these platforms, it's pretty, uh, it's cool. And at the same time, you can make some rewards and find some friends. Uh, it's, it's very in incredible for me, uh, this tactic. Absolutely. The gamification and coming from a teacher, I was a teacher for almost six years, uh, works. And it doesn't matter your age. It works with kids. It works with adults. Um, gamification is just natural to us uh, as a human species, and it's it's fun. It, it it like releases the good chemicals in your brain. So 
it, there's no reason to go away from that at all. Actually, go towards that. Yeah. And the other part I really like is uh, the community calls, you know, because there is this silent creators in, in uh, a lot of blockchains and sometimes they need some um, exposure. And when you do some community calls, uh, can be on Discord or even Twitter space and share their content in some official social medias. Uh, from the blockchain, it's pretty. It's pretty cool because you incentivize them to to grow and to grow in this new community. What do you think about that, uh, Rams? Yeah, community calls are powerful. Um, there's different types of community members. So the more ways we have of connecting with them, if it's visual with graphics and they only follow Twitter and they just see a visual and that's enough of an update, um, then do that. Uh, community calls, voice. Um, participation from them. Some people want to be more vocal or it's easier for them. So those always help. And, and on Astar, we're pushing more on the Discord side, now these yeah. community calls, um, simply because there's more tools on Discord to have and record um, you know, participation, whether it's questions that are live, um, whatever it may be. It could be activities around the call. There's this more than Twitter space. So we're changing a little bit of the tools that we use. Uh, but all, but we're still including these community calls, right? So just like everyone's a different type of learner, some are visual, some are audible, or, or just readers, the same with our community members. They, so having more of those uh, different types of ways to connect is super important. Yeah, and that's a, a good connection to the next question, which, which is like... Uh, um, what we call like the future of DAOs and uh, NFT communities and the tools that we are using, for example, we show up this one on Astar Degens, which is the snapshot. So you can create proposals here. There's, uh, I think there's the Web3 work. I forgot the name that you can create grants and people can go there and, and, and make some money too. There's even the Airlift. Yeah, pretty, pretty interesting that now Astar is using is more for gamification. So... We can talk about some of your most powerful tools, in your opinion, for managing DAOs and NFT communities. What, what's your list on that, uh, Rams? Yeah, the first one, just from experience with Snapshot, um, the website that is able to read you know, your, your, your token, your assets, your wallet assets, and then use that to vote. And so we created a a SRD Gens DAO, you know, snapshot. We began with proposals. Some were funny. The first one was actually about Sota Wantanabe, the CEO, the, the founder of Astar. Mm-hmm. And we, <laughs> we <laughs> scroll all the way back. It's a ceremony about yeah. uh, knighting Sota and where will we hold this 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 event. And it was fictional, of course. It, was, it wasn't real, but it was a practice. And that's part of the gamification. We practice using Snapshot as a community, and there was thousands of voters for that silly vote. <laughs> and it was good. And so this is something that PancakeSwap does as well. They have a community vote, and they, they allow community people to, to just post any proposal, and they vote on it. But it doesn't always mean it's going to be implemented. And then they have a core team, you know, proposal and voting section, which is the real proposals. But anyway, mm-hmm. having the uh, communities practice with something fun, it was key. And so Snapshot's still one of my favorite. Uh, they allow this integration of different chains as well. As our tokens or our NFT token is used as the voting. Uh, Airlift as a I, I pushed airlifts right now, and for the last month, I've been working with the team. They're a great team, uh, really responsive, and it's a new tool. But this tool is a little bit different than Zelly and other Web3 growth platforms, which these tools are called, because it taps into what Polkadot has, the substrate. Um, and so you could you can start tracking, you know, what wallets, substrate wallets use and the EVM side, of course, too. So they have both. So this capability opens up new, you know, ideas. Um, so, hey, if you're a NFT holder on this substrate chain or you're holding this this substrate based NFT, um, then we could track you. You know, we could reward you for being in this ecosystem. Um, 
or if you're doing something on EVM, we could also do that or, or both. So we're right now we're just sort of experimenting with this Voyage to Supernova campaign. We experimented with a pink robot NFT mint, which incorporated AI and substrate. And then we rewarded those people that minted um, one and, you know, and always making it accessible. That means there's not really a lot of financial obstacles. If you were going to mint a pink robot, it costs 20 to 25 cents. Um, and then you were rewarded back actually more uh, than what you spent. So we're showing that this technology that's on Polkadot and Astar is as good or even better than what exists already on EVM. And we yeah. all on, are on Polkadot for different reasons. But Astar's main reason is the technology side of it. We know it's secured. We know it has great potential, especially now with Gavin Woods' like recent um, speech about the future of uh, Polkadot. And some people are calling it Polkadot 2.0. Um, yeah. and, and it's actually bigger than that. So, so what we're seeing now is like we're teaching the community through Airlift, through this gamification process, get used to some fun activities, of course, and then perhaps we could use Airlift to help with the governance. Maybe we teach them how to vote um, with Snapshot with this um, Airlift campaign. Or we bring them to the forum where the proposals are being put up by teams. And we ask them, like, hey, comment on this proposal. So the whole thing is, though, the, the hardest thing is to bring a user to the the topic or the, the material. So bringing the user to the governance platform or the, the forum to read a proposal, that's the hardest part. And these yeah. kinds of tools help a lot. So yeah, Airlift is becoming one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, uh, bring the user to actually vote because uh, there's this uh, um, like bad idea of DAOs that sometimes their vote doesn't count. You know, you, you have some experience of some very centralized DAOs that, that, that has like 99% of vote yes, you know, because a whale vote yes in some DAO. And so that's the point I see is that the new versions of DAOs, I see Astar Dijams as an example of success because in, uh, I think the, the evolution of DAOs is going to go to more NFT base because you have identity uh, and sometimes you can have a better distribution. Uh, and in the future, you're gonna use this new tech called quadratic voting that if you have concentrations of tokens, uh, it doesn't matter because it, it matters more in terms of what you made and what you uh, contribute to the ecosystem, not how much you, you hold, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think uh, for the uh, future of DAOs, um, gamification is very important, like you said, because to bring users to participate is a big barrier right now. They are just uh, looking outside and sometimes just waiting to something to pump. <laughs> you know, they don't want to contribute. Uh, but like you said, uh, platforms like Airlift or Zilli, I think it helped us in these constructions. What do you think about that as, oh, uh, ab rant? Absolutely, yeah. Bringing it to the user or making it easier or fun yeah. um, is better than nothing. Because if we didn't do anything or experiment, <laughs> yeah. then we would have zero. We, we automatically know. So, yeah. so the larger the you know the the pool sizes of users who are exposing this tool to, then the higher the chance of them participating. Um, the other thing, and, and you're talking about the future of, of, of DAOs and even identity with NFTs, totally. Uh, I think the social reputational point system that you could, you could have tied into how you vote, who you are on chain is important. Yeah. And you can still hold anonymity for sure. Um, there's a lot to say to that. And I think every blockchain or every kind of project will have their version of of governance basically because that's what DAOs are and at Astar we're taking the uh, careful approach to governance because we Astar likes to um, basically look at what's happening not just on Polkadot and OpenGov and you know the, the whole governance system here but also in other places and taking cues from other systems and a lot of teams use Snapshot and we saw something recently with Arbitrum and Snapshot right 
and all that yeah. news there. So we're carefully, and Hoon, who, um, who is on the Asar team, one of the core, is taking uh, the view as in we should have a careful approach on actually using the Astar token as governance, you know, as a vote, because we see a lot of pr issues arising because of people's um, interest, financial interest, and how they vote. So these whales with giant bags yeah. voting with their, you know, their their assets that are speculative leads to one way of voting. So what if we incorporate another layer? There's a, there's probably a. Uh, uh, and I'm giving a little bit of like uh, insight here on how we're looking at this is having a different token that has no speculation or has a value um, that perhaps can be burnt if it's not used, that is used for voting. And then having different entities, uh, basically the stakeholders, who's actually, um, who gains from Astar's success? Well, it's obviously the businesses that are on Astar that, that stand a chance to benefit from Astar success. So those are the entities that should be voting, um, but not with their speculative assets, perhaps with another another token. And so this has all, you know, this has been sort of thought about and discussed internally now and soon to be public because we have a crowdcast, which is going to talk about governance next week um, on the 19th, sorry, so in, a little, in eight days. So so, to, so look forward to how Astar is approaching it as well, because the way it has been done doesn't mean it's the the best way. We're using yeah, for sure. <laughs> we're yeah. using let's say Uniswap and using the swap, the, the Uniswap. Yeah, there is too many flaws. Yeah, right. So we're just taking it up another level, um, creating another layer uh, based on research, and you know experimenting and scaling. So we're going to start small, and we're going to take the stakeholders. And including us as users, we're stakeholders as well. And so how, how we're going to approach that is going to be really interesting. We're, we're looking forward to the feedback from the community member and, and like yourself too, as, as an ambassador. Yeah, no, for sure. And I have uh, one project as um, a good example of like um, interesting work. They call work streams. It's like a shape shift, you know. So what they do with their DAO is that they distribute uh, the work streams, you know, the product moderation, and you have one guy, you know, that represent this work stream. And uh, so uh, these work streams are very independent, so they can hire, fire, or even send payments. And the individuals, you know, token holders can go to these work streams and say, oh, I want this grant, I want to contribute in your work stream. And, and then because they are very independent, they, it's very flexible and more efficient. Sometimes when you have DAOs that are not very organized, you know, don't, don't have this uh, 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 architecture here. But uh, that's one of example for me that uh, can be interesting to implement. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is super interesting. I talked to one of, actually, he was a community member who worked then later in the marketing uh, work stream for Shapeshift, and I met him in, um, I think it was in Denver uh, at a conference. So it's I, this is a lot. Of, there's a lot of similarity in how I think Astar Degens and Astar Degens is fun because it's a very degen way to approach it. It's very messy, but we had like tribes, right? Yeah, there's a, yeah. A, 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 a analytics tribe. That I think you were part of it at one point. There's yeah. The, the there's the media tribe and so on. So I think. I think in general, we all have sort of this, this inclination to make smaller groups because that's how I think we humans work better in small groups. Um, and then focus on our specialties or on our talents and then for the greater good. Obviously, that's a lot of coordination too. And so I think if there is a good uh, base, a foundation of leaders or a, a group of leaders or a council, you know, that can help organize this, and it definitely becomes uh, more efficient, in my view. Yeah. And not only that, I think, Rams, is a very other, very important topic is about security. You know, um, we're seeing a bunch of hacks on Discord and Telegram, you know, uh, and how you manage permissions in your DAO using Discord. For example, you can, you can uh, give access to a third party 
application or even a bot or some user that it's a mod is hacked and then they take entire of the the server so what's your approach in terms of this security when you when you're managing uh like a DAO on discord or telegram yeah uh security huge yeah. <laughs> huge. <laughs> huge uh and recently we've been seeing a lot of big blockchain teams get you know hacked um yeah. And I follow this one account on Twitter, John HQ, uh, which he's a leader in security for Discords. And he trains, uh, I have to get the right uh, Twitter handle, but he trains and he gives insight on, yeah, John HQ, G J O N uh, underscore HQ. And he, he does audits. He does Discord audits and he gives tips and advice. And one of his, his main tip is whoever is the admin, the admin account on Discord should be a cold account. A cold account means that there's no one really using that account ever for anything else. It just sits there. It's, it's the admin. Uh, there's people who have access to it or one person who has the, the, the password to its Gmail account or whatever, but there's, it's a cold account. Um, and that helps already tremendously with security uh, because yeah. the admin account on Discord, where a lot of these DAOs are you know, taking place or a lot of discussion is, is that that one sole admin account is the most important one. And then the other tips in security is just having like monthly check-ins, you know, like, hey, change your password. That's something as simple as that. And it becomes a habit. And, yeah. and to if, FA, to FA of the yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, and it's good if the rest of the community members do that too, like create this culture because as fast as we advance with, you know, technology on the good side, or I like to call it, there's maybe there's a good side to technology. There's also these uh, deceptors or this malicious, you know, intent filled people who want to do the opposite, right? Use technology and advance it, but to, to gain in, in ways that are, are not good for the rest. <laughs> so, yeah. so we have to keep up to date and we have to develop new habits for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the first tip is not allowing DMs that are not in your friend list <laughs> uh, uh -huh. because when you join a server, they, there's automatic a bot sending you a, like a phishing link and they can take over of your account. For example, in this one, I never click links you don't trust, you know, so uh, that's the first one. Yeah, and I think uh, on Telegram, at least, um, it's more difficult because it doesn't have very tools. It's like a very simple. Um, sometimes, for example, I, I, I received a, uh, a screenshot yesterday of somebody using my, my PFP and talking as like an ambassador of Aster and trying to <laughs> talk with people, you know what I mean? So it's so easy to make fake accounts. Uh, it's it's a wild mess, you know? Yes. Yeah, and that's it's it's only going to get wilder, especially with AI. With and, AI, yeah. Yeah, so let's, we have to be prepared. For sure. So uh, we are getting close to the end, um, Rams. And the last topic is about... Um, how new users and builders can contribute in this world, you know? Uh, what is your advice to who is um, initiating and beginning in crypto and, and be part of this new economy? What's your advice? My first piece of advice is it, it, it's hard to tell because I, I used YouTube a lot when starting to do my research. And it's probably the worst place <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah. to get advice. And because you get the, you tend to believe these big accounts are trustworthy. So my first piece of advice is really take what you see on, on YouTube as a grain of salt. If anything, it should just spark uh, interest in different kind of blockchains. Um, you know, like, oh, I heard someone mention Avalanche. Um, I'm not going to take what that person said. Uh at heart value or at face value, but I'm going to do my own research um, and actually look at Avalanche's own site. But even then, it takes a lot of time and they take your time with all this research. Um, it's it's very easy to be de deceived nowadays, um, even with fake Avalanche sites or, or even fake Astar sites. They exist out there. Um, so take your time, 
and approach you know the your research very carefully that's the first piece of advice for new users and just coming from i think all of our experiences like do your own research really means to to do it um the second piece is uh join communities um that's where most of the the learning happens and just as as careful you are with doing research be careful with the users that are sending you links right but eventually you could see through time you know which ones are the dedicated users are the more trustworthy um and just experiment with different communities uh, i think it's now it's kind of fun to see that maximalism is kind of frowned upon because we don't live in a world where one thing rules all we're going to be a society with different blockchains involved or and a lot of we're going to be jumping back and forth between chains even if we don't see it um yeah and so experiment with different communities uh every, like the tezos community and there i recently learned has a great art community um and they are highly you know active and a lot of great artists are just joining there and selling their artwork um by by thousands you know thousands of pieces and thousands of artists so it's and that's what they might specialize in or they might not you know knew that was what was happening but it's happening so it's it's fun in the near there's a lot of builders there like um it's just accessible it's it's fast development um and so it's fun to like peek into a twitter space when they're talking about this dev team who's created a po-op, you know, app and their successes with it. Because once you start joining other communities, you start seeing what works and what doesn't. And you can take it to your own communities or, or, or your own interest and share that piece of information or find other people that like are intrigued by what you found. So that's the other piece of advice. And that's what I did, too. And that write up that was done. It, it shows my kind of venture through different communities that with the chain link uh, community and then uh, NFT communities and artists and, and so on. Um, but yeah, that's one of my pieces of advice, join communities, because that's where a lot of the learning happens. Um, ask questions and, and contribute if you want to contribute. Um, if not, just be easily just observe. Yeah, I agree totally about that. You know, join communities, ask questions, you know, uh, Maybe uh, you, you, you can filter some information on Twitter too. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a lot of scams there, but if you follow the ex uh, very insightful users that contribute there, you can find um, other way. Uh, I think ambassador programs are pretty cool to initiate in crypto, uh, like Astar was for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and that's it, Rams. Thank you very much for being here. And and we can schedule in the future next interview, <laughs> talk about other things on, on Aster Network and Polkadot. So thank you very much for being here, Rams. Thank you, DeFi guy. It was a pleasure to talk to you. I'm looking forward to the next to the next piece. Oh yeah. So see you guys later in the next interview. <laughs>